Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name's Ron, and today we're going to be doing another build guide. This is for the Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon, Gunner's second primary weapon and a fan favorite of many dwarves. I know a ton of people really like this weapon, and, and you can see why it's, uh, it's a very powerful weapon. <laughs> So I'm going to be going over three builds that I use without overclocks for this. Um, we're going to be going over my general purpose build first, and then a damage build, and then a tank build. Because you can build tanky with this, and I'll kind of explain that once we get to that part. Then we'll be going over all the overclocks, so let's get started. In our tier 1, we have three options. We have increased caliber rounds for three more damage. Pretty good. We have high capacity magazines. This gives us double the magazine size, so we go from 110 to 220, which is... Kind of overkill in my opinion, you usually don't need 220 rounds with the auto cannon at one time, especially if you're running born ready. If you're not running born ready, uh, then yeah, sure, it's fine. And then our last option is expanded ammo bags, so we go from our 440 spare ammo to 660 spare ammo, so we can get a lot of extra bullets. For me, personally, I really like the expanded ammo bags. This feels so good on the gun. You barely ever run out of bullets with the auto cannon. at least I do. Feels like it takes forever to run through ammo with this gun. Even without this, it takes a while to run through all your ammo with this gun, but this just makes it so efficient, and a lot of the time, you can just skip your resupply or give it to somebody else. In Tier 2, we have tighter barrel alignment. This decreases our base spread by 30%. Pretty good. The auto cannon's still not going to be great at long range. The auto cannon will never really be all that great at long range, even if you build it for full accuracy. It's still fairly inconsistent. It's best used at medium to close range, specifically against crowds. That's where it really shines. So this one, even though it's not a bad option by any means, and if you like it, feel free to take it, it's not the one that I usually go for. Our second option is improved gas system. This increases our minimum rate of fire and increases our maximum rate of fire. So our gun will spin up a little bit quicker, get to its top rate of fire a little bit faster, and have a higher rate of fire when it is up to there. Pretty good. And then our last option is lighter barrel assembly. This gives us more minimum rate of fire and increases the rate of fire scaling. So our gun ramps up its rate of fire quicker. I usually pick between these two, whichever one you like. Pick that one. Do you want um, a higher rate of fire to where you can have more damage once your gun is at its full sustained fire? Or do you want a faster startup with your gun to deal more damage quickly, at least early on? Um, usually I go with the lighter barrel assembly for my general loadout, but both of these options are great. And even the tighter barrel assembly is great too if you like using that. In tier 3, we have the supercharged feed mechanism, exactly the same as our improved gas system. Increased minimum rate of fire, increased maximum rate of fire. Great. We have loaded rounds. This increases our area damage, so we go from 9 area damage to 11. Also really great. And then we have high velocity rounds. This increases our direct damage from 14 to 18. Really pick whichever one of these you like in tier 3. If you want more sustained fire and higher damage per second once your gun is fully ramped up, go with the feed mechanism. If you want more crowd damage, go with loaded rounds. And if you want more single target damage, go with the high velocity rounds. All of them are really good. I usually like going with the high velocity rounds though. In tier 4 we have, again, two great options. For some reason the, the auto cannon got almost nothing but great options in almost every tier. So we got hardened rounds which gives us armor breaking, we get 400% more armor breaking. Great if you don't want to be uh, hitting things in the weak spot, which the auto cannon isn't always the best for hitting things in the weak spot just because it's not super accurate. So if you want to break the armor off of guards, off of... Um, Praetorians, take this one, it's really good. Our other option is shrapnel rounds. This increases our AOE to uh, our rounds, so we have a bigger splash zone for our rounds to hit enemies. This one's also really good. If you want more crowd control, go with the um, shrapnel rounds. If you want more single target damage, go with the hardened rounds. Usually I go with the hardened rounds without uh, any overclocks. I find it pretty useful for just knocking the armor off of the uh, bigger bugs. And then in tier 5, we have feedback loop. This gives us 10% more damage once we are at our maximum rate of fire pretty good. We have suppressive fire. This deals 50% fear to enemies within one meter of bullet impact, so enemies are more likely to run away from us. Very useful for crowds. And then we have damage resistance at full rate of fire. This gives us 33% damage reduction when we hit that top rate of fire. Usually I just go with the feedback loop here if I'm not going with uh, overclocks and just deal more damage. Um, this build will work pretty well against crowds. It works pretty well against single targets. You have a lot of bullets. It's a very flexible weapon. The only problem I guess that this weapon has is that it's not that great at long range, but you can pair this with a very accurate burst pistol or with a revolver, which is naturally very accurate, and then you have all of your bases covered pretty much. Next we're going to go with an AoE build. I think I said a damage build at the start of this, and I meant to say AoE build. 
Um, so we can deal with more crowds than we otherwise would. And then we'll go with our tank build. You can go with the high capacity magazines and double your overall mag size. This is an option. I still like going with the expanded ammo bags more just because of how many bullets you get and how useful it is. In tier two, I like going with the improved gas system for this. This increases our top rate of fire so we can be firing this into crowds more. Uh, in tier three, I go with loaded rounds so we have a little bit more area damage. We might be able to splash this damage a little bit more, especially since we're going to go with shrapnel rounds in tier four, increasing that AOE radius. And then in tier five, I like going with the suppressive fire. This is to scare off enemies that we're not directly killing. Uh, you could go with the uh, feedback loop for this too and do even more damage if you want. All right, and then we're going to go with our tank build, which relies solely on this mod right here, damage resistance at full rate of fire. So we get 33% damage resist, and this can be stacked onto other damage resist, most notably veteran depositor. So if you take the passive perk veteran depositor and you stand next to a uh, drop-off point, whether that be the rig on, a oil, on an oil mission or on a point extract, or if you stand near Molly, and then you will get this damage resist as well. It does make it so you can kind of just tank through a lot of stuff, especially since you also have your shield. So for this, once again, I do like going with the expanded ammo bags. The The amount of bullets you get is just awesome. Uh, if you don't like that, the other two options are pretty good too. In tier two, we're definitely going to go with lighter barrel assembly. This ramps up our rate of fire quicker, so we can get to that top rate of fire faster than we normally would. In tier three, honestly, any of these are fine. Pick whichever one you like the most. I usually like going with the high velocity rounds to get some more damage, but loaded rounds is great for crowds, and the supercharged fig mechanism does mess with our top rate of fire, so we're going to be a little bit slower getting up to that top rate of fire, but you're still going to get there fairly quick. And then in tier 4, again, it's your choice. Hardened rounds is great for taking care of big things or taking care of armored things. Trap mill rounds is great for taking care of crowds. Whichever one you feel like you need more of, just pick that one. I usually go with the hardened rounds, but it's your choice. Now let's talk about each of the overclocks for the auto cannon. The auto cannon also has pretty much nothing but great overclocks too. First up, we have one of the more basic ones. This is composite drums. This one just makes it so we get 110 extra bullets, which is very useful. And it also increases our reload speed by half a second. Reload speed of the auto cannon is useful. Um, if you do happen to manually reload the auto cannon, it is fairly easy to reload cancel the auto cannon. Uh, to do this, just wait for the ammo to actually go into the gun where you see the numbers change at the bottom, pull out your pickaxe and then put it away, just the same way you do with the other weapons that you can reload cancel or that you normally reload cancel like the Warthog or the Loki or whatever it might be. And then you get a little bit faster reload speed. That's not entirely necessary though because pretty much whenever I'm running the auto cannon, I'm running born ready. So I pretty much fire the auto cannon until it's out of bullets or nearly out of bullets and then switch to whatever my secondary is and just use that and then just wait for the gun to be reloaded, switch back to it and just keep firing into crowds. So reload speed doesn't really matter to me all that much with this. It's mostly the extra ammo that you get. And I did say that the extra ammo in tier one is really useful. This one is as well. And you can stack them if you want, which is what I like to do because having 770 rounds, not counting the 110 rounds that you already have in the gun. So you have 880 rounds in total with this. It takes a very long time for you to run out of bullets with this particular build. Maybe not as long as like the full ammo minigun build outside of this choice. I usually just build it the same way that I normally do, so something like this. You can build this really however you like though, like how you can with so many other clean overclocks. There's just nothing but an upside to this one. Our second clean overclock is also a great one. This is splintering shells. This gives us a larger AOE radius and it gives us one more area damage. Um, this one's great for crowd control. You can build this one however you'd like to. The way that I usually like to build this one is going with expanded ammo bags, going with the lighter barrel assembly, going with loaded shells so that we do even more area damage going with shrapnel rounds. This just helps us have a pretty sizable AOE radius and we're doing pretty good damage in that AOE radius. And then going with either suppression or going with the feedback loop to get extra damage. I find this build to be pretty useful. You could go with just a more damage build like how I did with my last one and it works just fine. This way we have a little bit more area and a little bit more AOE. So it is a very flexible uh, overclock as well. And this one, even though it's a clean overclock, I find it to be super useful a lot of the time. It's really strong. All right, then we have Carpet Bomber, which Carpet Bomber is um, an overclock that had a lot of attention for quite a while. A lot of people really liked it for quite a while. And I'm not sure just because there was so many people using it that it kind of got as much attention as, as it did or as much praise as it did. 
but I've been using it a whole lot less recently. This gives you more area damage, so we get three more area damage and it gives us a larger radius. It pretty much gives us this tier four in terms of uh, explosion radius. However, it cuts down on our total damage by seven. Uh, that's kind of the downside to this one and why I've been kind of moving away from Carpet Bomber because we have two other AoE overclocks and I find that both of them are a little bit stronger at least in the way that I want to use them being the Neurotoxin Payload and the Splintering Shells. Splintering Shells is more flexible because you can build whatever you want on it, it's nothing but an upside. And then Neurotoxin is more specialized towards hordes um, and towards team... Um, like slowdown. That's not to say Carpet Bomber is bad by any means. It's still a really strong overclock. It's just I have found myself using it less and less recently. So for Carpet Bomber, once again, we're going the expanded ammo bags. I really like the extra ammo. If you don't, take one of the other two. I wouldn't really recommend going with just damage here and trying to level this back out. It wouldn't be a bad option, but I find it kind of an underwhelming option because we're doing a decent amount of AoE damage. We might as well just capitalize on our AoE damage. So that's why I usually go with the expanded ammo bags. Um, I do like the improved gas system here just so that we can have a higher top rate of fire, we can deal with more enemies, but the light barrel assembly is also quite good here. Going with the loaded rounds in tier 3 um, so that we have even more area damage. Going with shrapnel rounds so that we have even more AoE. This is pretty nice to have that 2.6 meters. Uh, you don't have to be all that accurate at all with this. You just have to hit close and you'll be splashing damage to enemies. And then I do like going with the fear here, but the uh, feedback loop is also pretty useful. Then we have combat mobility, which combat mobility I've been liking a lot recently. This one halves our magazine size, so we go from the uh, 110 to 55 rounds. This gives us a 30% reduction in our spread, so our gun is more accurate. This gives us our tier 2 here. And this also increases our rate of fire growth by 50%. So that kind of also gives us this tier 2 as well. Our movement speed is also much better than it otherwise would be, where at maximum we can move at 50% of our movement speed when we're firing the gun. Now we can move at 85% of our movement speed. This is uh, at least significant towards some enemies, like a particularly ranged enemies. You can still move out of the way of Acid Spitters, Web Spitters, Mactera without having to worry about like uh, stopping your fire and then jumping out of the way of whatever their shot is. You can just keep strafing back and forth and dodge a lot of uh, attacks that are coming your way. Now you could just take the tier one here that doubles your magazine size and then you have nothing but bonuses for your auto cannon, which is a pretty good option. For me, once again, the ammo is just too hard to pass up, so I just take it. And tier two, we are gonna go with the lighter barrel assembly. This gives us 225 rate of fire. This is really important because we're either gonna take the feedback loop in dealing more damage or going with the uh, tank build. I personally like the tank build a lot with this one. In tier three, we're gonna go with high velocity rounds to get more damage. In tier four, pick whichever one of these you like. I usually go with hardened rounds, but the uh, AOE rounds is pretty good too. And then I would recommend going with either the feedback loop or going with the top rate of fire or, or going with the tank option. Uh, the upside of this is that after two shots with this particular build, then you are at your top rate of fire. So pretty much as soon as you start firing the gun, you will either have the 33% damage resist or you have the 10% more damage when you're at that rate of fire. I like going with the damage resist. This makes it so even if enemies do manage to sneak up on you and maybe hit you once or twice, you can usually turn right to them, start firing, and you will be at that 33% damage resist. Then we've got our unstable overclocks. And our first one is Big Bertha. Big Bertha gives us more uh, direct damage, gives us 12 more, so it almost doubles our base damage. We lose out on 110 maximum ammo, we lose out on half the magazine size, we lose out on our top rate of fire, but our gun does get more accurate, so we are 30% more accurate than we normally would be. Big Bertha is still a really strong overclock even after the hurricane came out. It's maybe not my go-to anymore, especially for like elimination missions because it used to be a pretty strong option to take in elimination missions and it's not like it suddenly got weaker or anything it's just that we have the hurricane now that has things like plasma burster missiles and like the uh, jet fuel homebrew where we can kind of get uh potentially even more damage at least per shot out of uh our hurricane than we could the auto cannon so in tier one with this all of these are pretty decent choices but i do like the ammo um losing out on the ammo that we can't actually run through bullets with the big berth overclock pretty quick so i find the extra ammo to be very useful more so than the magazine size and we already have increased damage so we don't necessarily need to go for more in tier two i like going with the improved gas system here to increase our top rate of fire so we have a slightly higher rate of fire than what our base gun is and this just kind of helps me get back to where the normal rate of fire is for the auto cannon and what i usually have it to 
If you don't like this and you want a faster startup time, then go with the lighter barrel assembly. But I personally enjoy the improved gas system. In tier 3, I go with the high velocity rounds. This gives us uh, 4 more damage, so we go up to 30 damage, at least on direct hit. We have actually 39 damage because of our area damage. In tier 4, I like going with the hardened rounds. We're already doing a lot of single target damage. We might as well break the thing's armor and do a bit more. So I usually take that. And then in tier 5, I almost always go with the feedback loop here to get an extra 10% more damage on top of our damage. Big Bertha is really strong for crowds. It's really strong for single targets, and it's pretty strong on pretty much every mission. And then our last overclock is Neurotoxin Payload. This one has a 50% chance of every round being able to poison enemies which deals damage over time and slows them. This also increases our AoE range uh, by 0.6 so we pretty much have our tier 4 here. And the downside of this one is that we lose out on 2 direct damage and 5 area damage. So our damage is cut significantly. The amount of damage that you can make up with this is pretty staggering because every round has a 50% chance of inflicting poison on enemies and that does not need to be a direct hit. It can be an AoE hit that then splashes poison to multiple enemies. So if you start firing this into crowds, you're going to pretty much poison the whole crowd, slow the whole crowd down and start dealing passive damage to them over time which can be very ammo efficient uh, in the long run, and it can definitely help out with the team, especially if the team has any other slowdowns, like you have a sludge pump on the team, if you have a flamethrower on the team, cryo cannon, and the poison can affect any enemy. So you can slow down anything with this, which is very nice. In tier one, I like going with the extra ammo, because even though this is very ammo efficient, I like having even more of it. In tier two, I like the lighter barrel assembly. However, the improved uh, gas system is also really good. In tier three, all of these options are pretty good. If you want to spam this into crowds more, go with the uh, feed mechanism. That's pretty fun. Going full rate of fire with this is very fun to do and pretty fun to watch. I wouldn't really recommend going with the loaded rounds. Two more area damage is not that significant, especially since we're losing out on five. Going with the high velocity rounds is a better choice. I go with the shrapnel rounds so that we do even more AOE or we have a larger AOE so we can potentially uh, splash poison to even more enemies and then go with suppressive fear because this way you're slowing everything down you're dealing damage over time and you're fearing all enemies so they have to be running away this is a very strong build especially for crowd control this is probably one of the strongest builds for crowd control just in general and you also don't need to have any sort of aim whatsoever so that does it for the auto cannon a great gun with a lot of great mods and a lot of great overclocks um, like I said, I do wish some of the other weapons would get overclocks and mods like this because I don't really have a whole lot to complain about on any of the tiers and same with any of the overclocks for the auto cannon. They're all pretty good. So thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this and if you would like to be a part of that, you can. There are links down in the description. I hope you guys have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!